Welcome to model steam engines and boilers. In this episode, which is part 40, I'm completing the cylinder mountings and making some special studs to hold the cylinder to the mountings. This series called How to Build a Model Steam Engine is for my Patreon supporters only. The full length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. Why is it a good idea to join Patreon? Firstly, you get to see the videos a few months before everyone else. You can download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. Both of the cylinder mounting brackets have now been made, and here they are attached to the cylinder on the bench. I'm also pleased to say that the accuracy of the mounting brackets is good. All I need to do now is drill the holes to mount them onto the bed, then round the ends of the mounting lugs and everything should be OK. Here's a shot of the two cylinder covers and the two brackets sat on the bench. I've only used the 47BA bolts for test assemblies. I've coated the two cylinder mounting brackets with some marking out blue and here they are sat on the edge of the bench. According to the Stuart drawing for this engine, the holes need to be drilled at one and three quarters of an inch centres. This is a bit of accidental blatant advertising for RDG tools, who supply these seven inch rulers. I'm just drawing a felt tip pen line which is level with the machine parts of the bracket. This is just a reference so I know what the distance is from the one eighth of an inch vertical part of the bracket. And it's over now to the drilling machine, first of all using a centre drill to drill the holes. I'm taking my time with this job and making sure that the holes that I'm drilling are in exactly the right position. There's a small amount of tolerance here, but if the holes aren't in the right position, it's really going to look bad. I'm aligning each of the brackets with the end of the machine vise using a piece of mahogany. And because this really cheap, horrible, nasty cross vise is clamped firmly in position, it's not going to move. I bought this cross vise a lot of years ago, possibly about 35 years ago, and it's done a lot of work. Plus I've abused it over the years and drilled holes in various parts of it by accident. The best thing about having a cross vise on a drilling machine means that I do not have to hold anything in my hands. Because as I am a keyboard player and do this frequently in my recording studio, a severe cut to one of my fingers or even worse a bit of my finger missing would cause me problems. In no time at all this simple job is completed and here's what the brackets look like when I push the 7BA bolts through the holes to align them. With the brackets bolted together, I rounded the ends where the bolts are. And I also rounded the ends of the mounting lugs. In with the casting set is a small plastic box full of the fixings. And I've tipped these out onto the bench so I can see more clearly which ones I need. When I fitted the studs into the holes in the cylinder, there is a problem. And here is one solution. I'm not going to lock tight the studs into the cylinder. I'm just going to lock tight the nuts to the studs. The first thing I'm doing is applying some Loctite 603 to the top of the plastic box. And this makes it much easier just to dip the stud in the Loctite and then fit the nut. And on each nut I'm allowing just a little bit of the studding to show through on the top of the nut. So they look like studs but they will all be the same. In each of the cylinder covers two of the holes are countersunk. And this part of the cylinder cover is hidden behind the bracket. Yet another top tip, never tighten all the parts up. Not until you've fitted all the bolts or studs and then tighten them up together. Just in case you're wondering, I have modified this cylinder slightly. I wanted my engine to be a bit different. I still have to do a bit of shaping on the cylinder cover and of course trim the gasket because it's slightly too big. Obviously the two studs that hold the bracket in place are longer than the two studs at the top. By converting these studs into bolts using Loctite 603, look how neat they are. There is just the right amount of stud protruding from the end of the nuts. Have a look at a few steam engines, not full size ones, I mean model ones, 
and you will see that a lot of the studs stick out of the nuts at different lengths, and this doesn't look very good, but not so with mine. In the next video of the series I will be threading the ends of the piston rod and making and fitting the piston. That's it for this episode. Just time for me to say thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.